Oh, good morning, Botai. Uh, there's a very interesting halacha that if a person has bread and he burns it before Pesach, burns it to a crisp, such that it's no longer um, edible even to a dog, the halacha is that it is mutar to benefit from on Pesach since it's already burnt. Nevertheless, this only applies if this was done before Pesach. If it was done on Pesach, which means the bread entered Pesach when it was still edible, and then you burnt it on Pesach, you still may not derive any benefit from it because it entered Pesach uh, in, in a form of Isur, so that's going to be Asur. There's a Machloket Rishonim, even if I burnt the bread to charcoal before Pesach, am I allowed to eat it on Pesach? It's not completely burnt. The Rabbeinu Zerchei Levi, the Ran, Rabbeinu Nisim, they say not only are you allowed to benefit from it, you're also allowed to eat it on Pesach because it's not food anymore. The Rosh says, Rabbeinu Ashir disagrees and he says, no, that's not the case. Over there, there's an element of achsheve. If you're eating it, that means that you consider it still food. And over there, there's still going to be an isur de rabbanan to eat from it on Pesach, even though it's burnt to a charcoal. Marana Shulchan Aruch rules in accordance with the Rosh. Now, there are many items that have chametz mixed into them, but they are nifsal before Pesach. They are already putrid. For instance, for instance, you have inks, shoe polishes, cigarettes, which are sometimes stuck together with some chametz derivatives. All these things, as long as they're produced before Pesach, uh, since the chametz over there is already considered putrid, you are allowed to benefit from them on Pesach. However, you have to make sure that it was produced before. If it was produced on Pesach, which means that this chametz went into Pesach being still fresh and good, uh, the halacha is that you won't be able to benefit from these things. So if a person needs to use these things, you should make sure to buy before Pesach so that you know that it was already nifsal ma'achilat ha'kelev before Pesach, in which case it'll be permissible. Have a wonderful day. Morning, Botai. So yesterday we spoke about the halachot of uh, bread, of chametz gamur, of tangible chametz, actual chametz, that becomes putrid before Pesach. The halacha is very clear that if it becomes nifsal ma'achilat ha'kelev, if it becomes uh, inedible even for a dog before Pesach, it is mutar be anna'a, makloket rishonim, if you can eat it or not, la'alacha, we say not, but obviously in terms of anna'a, the halacha is that it's mutar. Ta'arobet uh, chametz is the same thing. A chametz mixture is just as asur as actual chametz on Pesach. You can't own it, obviously you can't eat it, you can't benefit from it, but there's one big difference between actual chametz, which we call chametz gamur, and ta'arobet chametz, which is a chametz mixture. Whereas we said that with, with regards to chametz gamur, it has to be nifsal me'achilat ha'kelev before Pesach, it has to be inedible to a dog before Pesach in order to derive hana'a. With regards to ta'arovet chametz, a chametz mixture, da'at manan ha'shulchan aruch. If you look in siman taf membet, manan says meforash based on the Rambam, that all it needs to be in order to have hana'a from it on Pesach is nifsal me'achilat adam. It needs to be inedible to a human being. Therefore, very common issue that comes up with chametz mixtures uh, is pet food. A lot of people have pets, dogs, cats, birds, fish, whatever. So now listen carefully. You won't find in the market any dog, cat, whatever, pet foods with the hashgacha pesach on it because the companies that are manufacturing pet food, they're not doing kashel pesach They don't have badat sada haradit, food for dogs. You know what I'm saying? They don't, it just doesn't happen. Aval, mikol makom, listen carefully. What ends up happening is Many times, there's chametz mixed into the pet food. Now what are you going to say? Oh, it's nifsal ma'achilat adam, and therefore it's mutar to retain and feed to the animals on Pesach. That's wrong, because many times, the pet food, especially dog and cat food, it may not be very tasty, but by no stretch of imagination can we call it nifsal ma'achilat adam. It's not inedible. A person was very, sometimes this, you know, the food that they make for, for these pets is human grade. And therefore, be'emet, if there's ta'arovet chametz in there, if there's a chametz mixture in there, it would be asur. Bird feed, rabotai, many times has actual grains over there that were already made chametz, so it's chametz gamur. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, if you look, the Star K guide um, for Pesach has a section over their pet food. They did research and they found certain pet foods for dogs, cats, uh, birds, whatever it is, that does not contain any taro with chametz, so you should make sure to get those. The only one exception to this rule is uh, fish food. Fish food over there, the, if you ever opened up, you know, fish flakes, whatever, the things that you pour into the aquarium, it, forget about tasting, but if you smell it, that's mamash, ze reachem gehinam mamash. So over there, so over there, bivadayu bivadayu, if you taste it, ze that's that's kaddish. Anyway, so, yeah.
בוודאי, there's no question in the world that even though fish eat these things, it is בוודאי נפסל מאכילת אדם, and therefore, according to Gaon Chamen Tzion, he writes in Or Tzion, Manan Zechon Bracha agreed as well, that any fish food, those fish flakes that are putrid, are mutar to use on Pesach, even if it contains a ta'aruvet chametz. So that's with regards to that, a very important halacha. Have a wonderful day.